This unit focuses on the structure, properties, and reactivity of carboxylic acids and carboxylic acid derivatives. And these carbonyl compounds are fundamentally different from ketones and aldehydes in that they have a heteroatom bearing a lone pair connected to the carbonyl carbon. And this opens the door to some new reaction possibilities, substitution as opposed to elimination, and also potentially uh, opens the door to acidity in the case of the carboxylic acid as we'll see. So in this unit, we're going to look at the carboxylic acid functional group first, focusing on the origins of its acidity and the effects of substituents, resonance and inductive effects on the acidity of carboxylic acids. We'll review methods for the preparation of carboxylic acids in synthesis. Since we're going to learn reactions of this class of compounds in this unit, we want to remind ourselves how we can make these compounds uh, for the purpose of multi-step synthesis. We're going to apply the reactions of carboxylic acids in synthesis. And then in the latter half of the unit, we're going to focus on a very important general reaction type for carboxylic acids and carboxylic acid derivatives known as nucleophilic acyl substitution, or SNAR, also known as acylation of nucleophiles. So we'll look at the general mechanisms of SNAR reactions. We'll learn how to predict whether a given SNAR reaction is spontaneous or not based on the strength of the nucleophile versus the leaving group ability of the leaving group. We'll also revisit reactions of carboxylic acid derivatives with organometallic reagents, which follow a different course than the nucleophilic additions to ketones and aldehydes that we've previously seen, sort of. The reaction looks a little bit more complicated, but can be broken down into a substitution phase and an addition phase, as we'll see. We'll look at hydrolysis reactions of carboxylic acid derivatives, which are primarily substitution reactions where water comes in and the result is a carboxylic acid. And then finally, we'll see how the nitrile is really a carboxylic acid derivative in disguise. The cyano or nitrile carbon, the carbon involved in the CN triple bond here, is at the same oxidation level as a carboxylic acid derivative. And in many, many ways, nitriles behave a lot like carboxylic acid derivatives. Carboxylic acids contain the COOH or carboxyl functional group, and this is a carbonyl group linked to a hydroxyl group. This is known as the carboxyl. This slide shows you some examples of some important carboxylic acids. Acetic acid, one of the most ubiquitous organic acids out there is one. Lactic acid is important biochemically. Hexanoic acid is a relatively long chain carboxylic acid. Acetyl salicylic acid is aspirin. So this is, of course, a famous carboxylic acid, and ibuprofen is another pharmaceutical containing a carboxyl group. So the carboxylic acid shows up in a wide variety of compounds, and as the name suggests, this is a, an acidic functional group. And it's not terribly acidic, but the pKa is definitely lower than most organic functional groups you'll, you'll come across. So for example, benzoic acid has a pKa of about 4.2, and acetic acid rather famously has a pKa of 4.76. If you compare a, a seemingly related, a similar looking structure, at least superficially, in ethanol, the pKa is way up at 16. So these carboxylic acids, benzoic and acetic acid, are way more acidic than ethanol. Why is this? Well, let's think about the structures of the conjugate bases of each of these we'll see that there's a structural factor in the carboxylate that stabilizes it relative to a simple alkoxide. So deprotonation of ethanol gives this alkoxide here with an O minus with negative charge pretty much localized to that oxygen. In the carboxylate, which is the conjugate base of a carboxylic acid, the negative charge is the negatively charged oxygen is in conjugation with the carbonyl group. This means we can draw an alternative resonance form that puts the negative charge on the other carboxyl oxygen, showing that the negative charge is delocalized over not one, but two oxygens. And this is a stabilizing factor in the carboxylate anion, and stabilizing to the tune of about 12 pKa units, 12 orders of magnitude more acidic for acetic acid relative to ethanol. So huge, huge, huge increase in acidity as a result of the electron withdrawing carbonyl group in conjugation with the OH group. Trends in the acidity of carboxylic acids follow general patterns that we've seen before related to electron donating and withdrawing groups and inductive and resonance effects. So for example, if we add inductively withdrawing halogen substituents to the CH3 carbon of acetic acid, we see an increase in acidity because each of these 
electronegative chlorine atoms stabilizes the negative charge in the conjugate base, the carboxylate, relative to the unsubstituted acetic acid. So acetic acid here is the least acidic. The monochloro is next. Dichloro is even more acidic. And the trichloro, trichloroacetic acid, is the most acidic in this series. And again, this has to do with the inductive effect of the chlorines, the polarization of the carbon-chlorine bonds toward the chlorines, leaving positive charge at this carbon that stabilizes the negative charge that develops in the carboxyl group when that group is deprotonated. All right, resonance donating and withdrawing groups have a similar effect. So for example, strong electron withdrawing groups will tend to make the carboxylic acid group more acidic. And here we have a series of parasubstituted benzoic acids where Z is either an electron donating or withdrawing substituent. If Z is electron withdrawing, we see that the acid is quite a bit more acidic. So the NO2 substituted benzoic acid is the most acidic in this series. And as the electron withdrawing strength goes down, for example, from nitro to an aldehyde group, we get a little bit less acidic. The weakly withdrawing, just inductively withdrawing chlorine is even a little bit less acidic. In the case of a resonance electron withdrawing group, we can think about resonance structures that place positive charge in the vicinity of the negatively charged carboxylate group right here. And this is what leads to the enhanced acidity of carboxylic acids with these para-electron withdrawing groups. A donating group has the opposite effect, and I won't draw it out here explicitly, but donating groups, resonance donating groups, will put negative charge on this carbon directly linked to the carboxyl group. And the close proximity of those, op those like negative charges destabilizes the carboxylate. I encourage you to pause the video and try this out with a donating group like methoxy or an OH or an NH2 to make sure you understand the effect of electron donating groups here.